In this video, we will look at the three reduce methods in the streams interface. We will see what it is, where it can be used, and how to use them with parallel streams. Let's begin by looking at a typical example of Java streams. On the screen, you see a simple example of a Java streams pipeline. Here, a list of person names are extracted from a list of person objects with valid addresses. The pipeline uses the familiar map and filter methods to do its job. In streams, map and filter are considered as intermediate operations which return a stream by itself. On the other hand, the function toList is a terminal operation which converts the stream into a list which a developer can manipulate. So in our example, we end up converting the list of person to a list of string. That's pretty easy to do with streams. One particular point to note here, when we use the stream method on a collection, we intend to consume this stream sequentially. However, we can also consume the stream in a parallel manner by calling the parallel stream method of the stream interface. We will soon see examples of that and what the implications are. It's pretty surprising. We talked about the terminal operation. One of the examples of a terminal operation is reduce which is represented by the reduce methods in the stream interface. In plain English, the reduce method combines the sequence of elements from the stream to a single type. It does this based on a few functions that we provide as parameters to the reduce method. In fact, there are three overloaded methods for reduce in the streams interface, and we will take a look at each one of them. Here's the signature of the simplest of the three reduce methods, which takes in what is called as an accumulator function. Here in this signature, T represents the parameterized type of the stream interface. What that means is basically the elements in the stream are of type T. Can be anything, integer, string, or any class or interface. Accumulator represents the binary operator that is applied to the elements of the stream. The binary operator takes in two parameters of type T and returns a type T. It's basically a by function in Java. So you can think about elements coming in from the stream and the binary operator is operating on these streams and then finally giving you a result. One important thing here is that the accumulator must be associative, meaning that the order in which the function is applied to the sequence does not matter. We will get to this soon. Let's take a concrete example. Here's an example on the screen which adds up all the integers in a list. Notice here that the list of integers is reduced to a result type of integer which is also the type of the elements of the stream. The accumulator function being used here is a lambda, which simply adds two elements. Note also that no types are specified in the lambda, which means that the compiler will infer the type to be integer because the type of the stream element is integer. Instead of lambda, we can also use the method reference integer double colon sum. That's valid. Now let's go through the steps as each element of the stream is processed. During the processing, an intermediate variable is being used. And here we are using R, an uppercase R, to signify this intermediate result. As each element is processed, the intermediate variable R is calculated. When the next element is processed, R from the previous element processing is the value now passed to variable A, and the element is passed as the value for B. And then the function, the accumulator function is applied. After we do this for all of the elements, an optional of the result is returned. Why an optional? Because the number of elements in the list might be zero, in which case there is no result and an empty optional is returned. Now here you might ask why the accumulator needs to be associated. Now this is important when dealing with parallel streams because when dealing with parallel streams, 
the JVM might divide the stream into subgroups and handle these groups separately and then combine them. Having the accumulator as associative implies that the reduction will not depend on the order in which these subgroups are handled. Now the second form of the reduce method takes in an initial value, which is also called as the identity. This serves as the default value when there are no elements in the stream. It's also important to remember here that the identity passed to the reduce method is the initial value of R, the intermediate value, during the calculations. It's called the identity of the accumulator because when you apply the accumulator function on identity and any element, the result must be equal to the element. That's the very definition of identity. This is especially true when running with parallel streams, and we will soon see that. Let's take an example again. So on the screen here, the reduce method is called with the initial value set as zero. So we do not require an optional as a return type because the reduce method will always return a value. In case there are no elements, it will return the default value of zero. Let's see what happens in this case. The reduce method will follow the steps as shown to get the final result. We are assuming here that A and B are parameters to the accumulator function, which is integer colon colon sum. Now the only difference here from the last reduce method is that the initial value is set to the identity value, in this case, zero. Now let's go ahead and look at the interesting part. Let's take a look at what happens when we run this with parallel stream. In this code snippet, we have made several changes. For one, we added a debug statement to log the thread name and the actual accumulator parameters during the call. Secondly, notice that we are now using parallel stream instead of stream. And thirdly, we are running with an initial value of 100. Now you will notice that if you run the example, output will be 515 instead of 115. This is because 100 is not an identity for the accumulator. The accumulator being integer colon colon sum, the method reference. Zero is a valid identity because zero added to any integer will result in the same integer. But 100 is not an identity because 100 added to a particular integer is not the same integer. Now the reason why it is showing 515 is that each element in the stream is executed in a separate thread. It's actually using the common fork join pool to choose the thread. The first five lines of the output on the right shows the accumulator using 100 as the initial value. Each thread will use the initial value of 100 resulting in an incorrect overall sum. Now the rest of the lines sums up these intermediate results also by calling the accumulator function. Basically what we are saying here is that without the initial value being an identity value, the output will be vastly incorrect when run in a parallel stream. Now what is the identity value again? The definition of this identity value is when the accumulator function is applied to the identity value and any element in the stream, you should get the element in the stream again. Now the last method for reduce is the most general, but it's also the most difficult to understand. Here you see that a new parameterized type has come into the picture called u. That's because this particular reduce method reduces the elements of the stream to a type which is other than the stream element type, which is T. So the parameterized type U has to be specifically declared in the method. That's what you see here. Here the accumulator is a by function which takes in U and T as input parameters and returns U, which in this case will be the intermediate value. What would be the initial value of U when you start? That's the identity which we pass as the first parameter. There's a confusion about this combiner function. Why is it needed? 
You might think accumulator is sufficient because repeatedly calling the accumulator function on the elements will finally give the result. So why this need for combiner? This is important and a source of much confusion. Combiner is needed only for parallel streams and we will explain that soon. Consider the example on the screen with the same list which contains the integers 1 to 5. We now want the output of the reduce method to be a string. Notice that is a different type than the element which is the integer. Basically in our use case what we want to do is square each element of the list and then concatenate all of the resulting squares to one string. So let's take a look at the parameters of the reduce here. The first parameter, that's an empty string, which is the initial value or the identity value for the combiner. The empty string added to any other string will result in the same string. So it can be considered as an identity value. The second parameter is the accumulator by function, where the first parameter is the string and the second parameter is the integer. Again, what you see out here is type inference happening because we have not really specified the types of A and B, but the JVM can easily infer the types of A and B. The first parameter of the by function would be the intermediate string result from the previous operation. The third parameter is the combiner for combining the two strings. This is only used when using parallel streams. During parallel execution, the stream elements might be divided into many different subgroups. Let's say it is divided into two subgroups, one, two, three as one subgroup and four and five as a different subgroup. Each of these subgroups will reduce to a string when the accumulator is applied on them on different threads. But then we would need a function to combine these two strings into one. That's exactly what the combiner function is for. The strange and confusing behavior is that even though the third parameter is used only for parallel streams, it still needs to be provided for sequential streams as well. A null cannot be an acceptable third parameter. Let's go through the steps of how this particular reduce method works. Each call to the accumulator is shown with a comment about the line. However, notice that the third parameter string colon colon concat is not used at all because we are using sequential streams. Only the accumulator function is being used out here. And if you follow the steps towards the end, it will simply return 1491625. No optional. Now let's see how the above code runs with parallel streams. Once again, we have added debug statements to log the thread names and the operations so that we can clearly see the threads in use. We are definitely running with parallel stream, as you can see. The output of this will be something like shown on the right side of the screen. Elements and intermediate values are shown within angular brackets. Here you see that the elements in the list are being processed by different threads. Threads from the common fork join pool, thread pool. Each element is its own subgroup, basically. Those threads will then call the combiner function to combine the intermediate strings into the final string. You can see the first five lines show the accumulator function being called on the subgroups. Each element is a subgroup. And then the last four lines show the combiner function being called on the intermediate results. Basically by providing proper implementations of both accumulator and combiner functions, we make sure that the stream pipeline works for both sequential as well as parallel streams. Of course, note here that the accumulator and the combiner are actually related and need to be compatible with each other. Now the confusing part over here is sometimes the combiner is actually not required specifically for sequential streams and yet it appears to work. That's because that combiner is never used. For more information on the reduce methods, take a look at the Java doc for the stream interface. The Java doc will give you a good amount of information. 
Hope this has given you a good idea of how to use the reduce method. If you find this video useful and if you like this video, give a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more quality content.